TGIF, what do we got? Human growth Alzheimer's, serial swatter, migrant crime wave, British Robocop. <laughs> Welcome to Sigma Tiger News. You're here with the one and only Sigma Tiger. We've got a lot of great news here. TGIF, thank God it's Friday because it's been a long week full of crazy things. Let's go ahead and jump right in. A bunch of people are tearing this woman apart. <clears throat> she is the uh, premier of Alberta, so the leader of that province in Canada. Danielle Smith, she has a bid to transcend politics with Canada's toughest trans youth rules. So she's uh, uh, dusting everything up here and everyone's upset about what she's done by, you know, totally annihilating trans rights. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Here's an image of the woman. Um, Premier Daniel Smith swore for months that she didn't want to politicize issues around the rights and aspirations of transgender, gender fluid, or questioning youth. Uh, and has now declared Canada's most restrictive and wide-ranging set of policies governing the rights and aspirations of those same minors. She didn't want to politicize it, and yet uh, there Smith was on Thursday by herself at a news conference, lectern. The health, education, and sports ministers weren't on hand to explain the various reforms, nor any civil servants or uh, subject experts, only Alberta's chief politician. <clears throat> so they're saying because she didn't have a bunch of other politicians with her that she's politicizing it. Okay, interesting take. Uh, in the social media video issued Wednesday that launched these dramatic moves, and again the next day, Smith said she wants those children to know you are loved and supported as you work through your complex and often changing emotions, feelings, and beliefs. Okay. Uh, this guy disagrees that she loves them and cares about them, So, and many people do. Many people in that community believe that what she has moved forward with here is uh, taking a step backwards. And in their views of how far they've gotten with what's important to them, uh, yeah, possibly. So we have two opposing views here. Basically a view that uh, trans people or people that are uh, of... Um, what would be considered alternative to the traditional lifestyle of procreation. So this lifestyle is based off of desire, okay, not uh, natural procreation, which it seems to be like what nature's all about. Seeds, you know, animals, that's what everything does. It's, it's the natural progression of life is to procreate, keep going, you know, survive. So... Anyway, this alternative lifestyle that's based off of, uh, you know, choosing uh, something ulterior to nature, what you've been given, naturally. Uh, <clears throat> so they believe that uh, you should be allowed to do whatever you want with your body whenever you feel like it at any age. And that if your parents disagree with your thoughts and beliefs as a child, they should not have any opportunity to voice those opinions and the child should be taken away from those people the parents and be affirmed in their uh mindset so that seems to be the general view now that's not every trans person or lgbtq ia plus 2s all of, yes <clears throat> so anyway moving on let's just go ahead and get out of here i support the journey of adults adults who want to transition to another gender as far as they are adults and able to accept those consequences of those decisions, the Premier told reporters. I certainly do want, not want children to be making decisions before they've maybe even had sex about whether they want to stop that aspect of their life or before they've even contemplated whether they want to have kids. Right? So, um, other restrictions on children. The purchase of alcohol and tobacco and lottery till they're 18. Uh, voting until you're 18. Um, military duty until you're 18. 
driver's license 16 with a little bit of prohibition uh, so you know what's the deal here they're not allowed to do any of those things which are very important decisions to make but they would be allowed to uh, affirm care uh, that would change their actual physical structure of their body that you would not be able to reverse irreversible is the thing like uh, surgery obviously irreversible uh, puberty blockers debated heavily whether it's irreversible you know what I mean like introducing any sort of hormone into your body or uh, medicine or anything like that like it's all designed to change things you know that's the deal if your body is out of balance things change you know for whatever reason so <clears throat> herein lies the issue one group believes that they should have access to anything that helps them feel good or better about themselves and the other group feels that we should restrict access to it until you're uh, mentally capable of making a, a permanent decision I mean some places to get a tattoo you need parental consent right so well what if like I don't understand like that's the problem there's this big divide this is a new thing and everyone wants to help people and it's under the guise of like these children need help they're s not sick but they're like you know mentally unhealthy right there's something so we need to help them and do whatever we can to help 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 well there was an idea way back in the day as well is that like the best way to help people before we knew was to uh, bloodlet you know they put leech on your body and the theory was like hey listen this thing is going to suck the dirty blood out and it'll allow new blood to regenerate but if you do it too much then you'll make the body weak and it will die and they realized that so what the conservative mind not necessarily conservative ideology politically but just a conservative mind of like hey maybe we should think about this before just liberally allowing everyone to do whatever they want let's think about the consequences of this you know like living in the moment's great but you know knowing uh, or adhering to the idea that the future is coming likely uh, what could it hold maybe we should come up with a couple ideas of what might happen in the future and you know it'll help us be prepared so roll the dice or uh what so anyway uh some of that perhaps will be sorted out below the political level so what's the deal what has she decided uh basically age restrictions break new ground in canada she follows saskatchewan new brunswick with her plan to require parental consent when teens under 16 want to change their names or gender pronouns in classroom okay that's soft and light you know like allowing that under 16 i mean like you know minds are very uh easily manipulated you know what i mean like children can be indoctrinated into cults into uh religions or into any anything with a little bit of positive reinforcement you know uh, they can't discern because they don't have enough experience in life well this is giving them experience but if you're you know ushering them into ideologies that are for and against the thing is it should be open you should allow them to explore it and but you know if someone in their mind is like i have to have this or i'll die well if someone's stating that then there's obviously more deeper rooted issues than anything okay uh as well your uh, no gender reassignment surgery under 18 as well as puberty blockers So they go on to talk about uh, the trans policies put Smith on a hard edge of Canadian reform. She certainly does not ape the rhetoric in terms of those commentators. Held up to the next Carlson or Peterson, one could perceive her as a moderate, the balanced striker that she proclaims herself to be on this front. Until this point, even social conservatives had told this writer that they didn't believe that Smith, a self-proclaimed libertarian social moderate, would tread too far on this topic. A decade ago, she pushed against the Wild Rose Party. She led on LGBTQ issues and against then-governing Tories. So, like, she's not totally against, like, the rights of these people to express themselves. She just wants to make sure children aren't put in a situation where once they 
are old enough to have experienced life that they look back and say, oh my God, what have I done? You know what I mean? Like, what have I done? I can't change this. So like, look, just do some of your own research. A lot of people say trans people are suicidal. Of course, you know what I mean? Like there is some uh, unhappiness, some, some, some discontent there with what's going on with their environment and in, in their minds. So yeah, like perhaps they are like, you know, more prone to suicide. And they say that this gender affirming surgery will help alleviate those feelings. Yeah, sometimes it does. And for a lot of people it may, but everybody's different. There is no blanket that'll keep all of these people warm, okay? Uh, some people get really cold. Some people get really warm. So, you know, I'm sure if you looked at everybody's bed, it'd be different sheets. Like some people have five, six, some people have one. It's the same thing, okay? Like you can't just like give everyone a blanket and say deal with it. They're not all going to sleep the same. So it's the same thing. She's not politicizing it. She's trying to protect kids. And then everyone else comes out and says, well, guess what? You're not allowing me to raise my kids. The problem is, is that in a democracy, the way it works is that there's percentage bases. You know what I mean? That's how governments get voted in. You know, that's why the liberal and conservative change, because people's mindset changes. Maybe it gets a little too liberal and people are like, oh, OK, OK, OK. We don't like how that worked out. Let's go back with these conservative people. Like, they, And then the conservatives get too far like, and everyone's in jail and there's minimum mandatory sentences for everything. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, God, that's no good. Well, and we go a little bit too liberal and now people are walking around the streets uh, with dildos, you know, like parading around. So anyway, we will not stand for it, LGBTQ plus advocates criticize Daniel Smith's policy announcement. I found it quite hypocritical she's titling this policy parental rights when we, when with this policy, she's essentially taking away my right as a parent to get my child gender-affirming health care. Yeah, but you are the minority. That's the problem that these people don't understand is that just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean you get whatever you want. Yeah, in the privacy of your home, you hungry, you know, want a snack, well, you could have a salad or you could have a bag of potato chips. That's totally cool. Well, uh, when there's a majority, like, uh, in the world today, like, one thing we can all agree on. Nazis are bad. Pretty much everyone agrees on it, except for the people that are Nazis. Right? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm not bad. I like this stuff. It's great. Why don't you like me? I don't like you then. Well, guess what? Most of the people agree that the Nazi ideology is pretty bad. It's not a good one. And that's why a lot of countries are like, okay, you're not even allowed to put this stuff up. Because a majority believe that it's bad. So the minority, the Nazis, suffer. And that's just the way it is. That's just how it is. So right now, all of the trans parents are like, hey, listen, I want to give my child everything. Uh, I'm a parent. I like to give my child everything too. But sometimes I see her trying to take a little bit too more, too much. You know, like story time, night time, best time. Hey, Tiger, tell me a story. Okay, I'll tell you a story. And she's like, she knows. Can I have two stories? Yes, you may have two stories. And then I proceed to tell her two wonderful stories. I'm like, okay, good night. And she's like, daddy, I meant to say three stories. And I'm like, ooh, okay, okay. So like, if I give in, sure. But if I don't explain to her, then tomorrow she's going to be like three stories. And now I want four. And it continues. And you can actually see this behavior if you are aware and guess what if you nib that in the bud then it won't happen or at least just talk to your child about it and but i still struggle with it like every 30 days it'll get to the point where i have to rein it in and uh then it gets a little bit too far but if i don't ever rein it in that child will be a monster okay an absolute monster crying and screaming why can't i have what i want you know i talked about it in yesterday's newscast that you can't let your children be your peers, okay? There has to be a subordinate and an authority because that's exactly how life is designed. When you look outside, there's alpha males and there's beta males. That's nature. Well, there's also bosses and employees, okay? Teachers and students. It's literally how it's designed. It's always been like that. The linear hierarchy, it's not always like that, okay? It works. Communication-wise, it's great. But, you know, when you want leadership, there needs to be a tip of a spear, okay? So anyway, this parent is super upset that they can't go ahead and give their uh, adolescent puberty blockers. And there's a lot of parents out there like that. So we'll see how it all pans out. But if you're curious about how I personally feel about it, 
This is it, okay? I'm going to lay it on the line. All right? The tiger doesn't care what you do with your life. Unless it's hurting someone else or potentially causing pain or disruption or discomfort. You know what I mean? But in that order, pain first. Now, what's pain? Physical. Physical pain. Don't be hurting people. Nonviolence. That's key. Now, people are all about words or violence. Yeah, words hurt feelings. But guess what? That's part of it. That's part of life. That's part of being in existence is feeling pain and learning how to deal with it and getting over it. Not uh, telling everyone to be quiet and then trying to enjoy your life while everyone else tries to uh, find comfort in your requests. So here's the deal, okay? If you want to do what you want to do, that's great. But if you feel like what you want to do is beyond what everyone else thinks, well, that's too bad. You can fight for it, that's great. But you can't get super upset and freak out. And it seems like everyone's getting super upset and freaking out now. The internet has allowed people to uh, have a voice and it's amplified easily. And uh, so anyway, here's the deal. Children should be cared for, absolutely. They should be talked to and communicated with. They should be uh, given choices and opportunities, but also given boundaries. And that's it. We have a system that uh, children, at least human children, most of them can't figure anything out. If your child could plan a trip, okay, without your help, like give them a pad and a paper and say, we're going to California. We live in New York. I want you to write down how we're getting there, how much it's going to cost, and where we're going to stay, and a little like weekly itinerary. If your child can sit down and do all that without asking any questions and present that to you like within like an hour or two, yeah, okay, maybe that kid's like mega advanced and they know exactly what they want in life. And But that's the thing. There needs to be a battery of questions. There needs to be a round table. People need to stop arguing and fighting and saying this person and that person and those voices amplified. We need professionals. Professional liberal doctors, professional conservative, professional centric. And they all need to sit around and deal with it. And when someone gets upset, they all need to like allow them to speak and get it out there and then uh, counter that argument until they can all come to an agreement. And once the agreement is met, then the general population can swallow the pill. Not just shouting at each other and lopping off uh, digits and body parts and whatever and then just letting it all fall to the wayside in the guise of comfort and happiness and health. Because it ain't, it ain't working like that. Anyway, whatever. Do what you want in your own house and don't tell other people that they got to do it or hear it. An African gulag so ghastly that inmates risk death to escape. Can you imagine? It feels like planet Earth. 42 former prisoners in Eritrea's sprawling detention system described horrific conditions and frequent torture. Yeah, so you can't imagine being in prison. Well, guess what? Being in a prison in Nairobi, tiny African nation of Eritrea, is a sliver of fear wedged between Ethiopia and the Red Sea, a land that has known only a single strongman leader in the shadow of repression since the independence three decades ago. Nothing exemplifies the reach and cruelty of the state today as much as its prison system. Eritrea is riddled with an appalling variety of prisons, underground cells, and crumbling concrete. Yeah, so no one wants to go to prison, and you definitely don't want to go to an African one. Former detainee Mulu Zareji, uh, who was held for five years without ever learning the reason, said in an interview, You know how you all talk about where you went to college in America, in Eritrea? We do that with prisons. So if you don't know, uh, there was a whole bunch of clashes breaking out earlier this summer in Canada, uh, maybe even in the UK as well where these groups of people were very upset and they were protesting about uh, things that were happening in their home country, but they were showing it uh, and expressing it in other countries and they were clashing against each other. So different factions of uh, the same group quite upset. And you can see that uh, it's homegrown. 3.7 million people has never had a national election. So a completely corrupt people and unfortunately, they're a product of their environment. And everywhere uh, that uh, these people are, uh, they're going to bang heads. 
You know what I mean? Like, that's it. When you're raised in a small area with a densely populated uh, uh, group of people, and they're separated by ideology, then guess what? Within that country, outside that country, they're going to fight. It's just like a Montreal Canadiens fan and a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees. It's all the same thing. It's just fanaticism, okay? And someone plants an idea that New York and Boston can't be friends. And that's it. You're wearing the Red Sox hat. I got the NY. Get out of here. Anyway. Deadly Venezuelan gangster invasion inside the chilling Miami honey trap. Murder plot by migrant mobsters that should finally wake up liberal America to Biden's broken border fiasco. Quite the mouthful there. Let's grab the silver spoon and see what happens. A former Venezuelan police officer lay dead in his silver Toyota 4Runner in a vacant industrial park. He'd been strangled. His hands and feet were bound with tape. His body showed signs of torture. Investigators later determined that just hours earlier, Jose Luis Sanchez Valera, 43, had been lured by a petite raven-haired prostitute to a seedy hotel late on the night of November 27, 2023. An unfortunate ending for Mr. Valera, God rest his soul. Uh, there they met up with a second dark-haired, dark-eyed woman and rented a room for what Sanchez Valera surely must have expected to be a good time. Little did he know that he was the target of a deadly honey trap and that Three hooded men lay in wait in the parking garage, ready to ambush him, ransack his home, and then kill him. The brutal murderer had all the telltale signs of a street gang crime. And sure enough, a 23-year-old suspected member of Venezuela's notorious Tren de Aragua gang was arrested for the homicide. But the slaughter was not committed in the back alleys of Caracas. It happened in Miami. The murder marks a disturbing new milestone, the first Tren de Aragua killing on U.S. soil, and the undeniable spread of ultraviolent gangs from the ruins of Venezuela's socialist dystopia to U.S. cities. And here you have it. Uh, and why are we talking about this? Who cares? Whatever. Venezuela. Well, the border's wide open, everybody. Okay? And these people are pouring in at 10,000 at a time. We didn't cover it, but if you are, are aware, there's a bunch of migrants in New York City who beat up a bunch of police officers, got let out on bail, and apparently they have other uh, cases pending, and they gave fake names, and they fled to California. Guess what? Where are they coming from? Oh, who, who could have guessed? They're actually coming up from South America? That migrants are traveling all the way up here to get to America, the land of dreams? Well, guess what? Scum is scum no matter where it comes from. And these are 18 to 34-year-old males crossing the border all day, every day. It's not women with children, as you may think or be led to believe that it's families fleeing war-torn country these are prisoners if you check the news venezuela literally let out thousands and thousands of male prisoners knowing exactly where they're going because they're putting them on buses and sending them up and guess what they're coming to your town so look out ultraviolet light can kill almost all the viruses in a room why isn't it everywhere if you don't know ultraviolet light uh, is one spectrum the other is infrared and uh, that's the spectrum we can see within, like basically the rainbow of colors. Ultraviolet kills things. It's used to um, sanitize things. So as I write this article, I have a cold. At some point in the past couple of weeks, I managed to inhale a droplet of water suspended in the air that contained hundreds or thousands of copies of a virus, probably a rhinovirus, uh, the kind that causes the most common colds. That virus infected my throat and my sinuses, resulting in the sore throat and stuffed up nose I have right now. As inconveniences go, this feels rather minor. I think of my friends with small children who are constantly careening between RSV and the flu, and God knows what other infection their kids picked up in daycare and brought back home. I think of my family in assisted living facilities who sometimes find themselves confined to the room, unable to see their friends or interact with the outside world. When there's a respiratory virus going around, I think of the roughly 1.3 million people a year who die of tuberculosis, respiratory bacterium that we have yet to defeat. And of course, I think of the 7 million or so people worldwide killed over the past four years by a respiratory virus spread this exact same way, COVID-19. Yeah, so anyway, this guy here thinks about a lot of other people while he's sick, and it sounds like, uh, sounds like lies, really, to me. It doesn't 
believe he thinks about any of that stuff. So anyway, what's he talking about? Uh, the technology is called germicidal ultraviolet light GUV, and in particular, a relatively novel kind of ultraviolet light, often denoted as far UV. We have so much data suggesting that this is far and away the most impactful technology when it comes to protecting people from infectious disease that exists today, says Kevin Esfelt, a professor and biologist at MIT who has championed the idea. Anyway, I'm not going to go into it too much because it brings up the old carrot. So uh, UV germicide explained, humans can see waves of electromagnetic radiation with wavelengths between about 400 to 700 nanometers, a measurement that is one millionth the size of a millimeter, with violet colors coming at the shorter end at the range and red at the longer end. That's your spectrum of vision. This is what we know as visible light radiation with wavelengths just longer, and this is called infrared. Go longer and still you get radio waves. Amazing. So all this stuff, light, will turn into a radio wave. Interesting. Ultraviolet light is subdivided into UVA and UVB and UVC. Artificial UV used for disinfection is almost always UVC. So UV and UVC are often used interchangeably as terms in public health. So there you have it. The sun has ultraviolet light. All light is somewhere along the spectrum. 1877. Arthur Downs and Thomas Blunt published a note in Nature seeing the sunlight in small doses stop bacteria from reproducing. And there it is. Can you imagine? So anyway, go ahead and get yourself some UVC if you want to try and attempt to uh, cleanse some things. Won't say anything else. Oxford school shooter's married mom, Jennifer Crumbly, had a fair with firefighter and texted him to say she'd failed miserably as a parent after son Ethan murdered four classmates. The mother of Oxford school shooter Ethan Crumley was having an affair with a married firefighter before her son went on a gun rampage at his Michigan high school killing four classmates. The dramatic detail emerged in court Wednesday as Jennifer Crumley and her husband James stand trial for involuntary manslaughter over the school shooting in 2021. Unprecedented. They're holding the parents accountable for uh, what their children have done. Interesting. Um, such a weird dichotomy, though. Like, you think about the story we covered at the beginning you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, parents are responsible for their children who murder, but we're not responsible for the children uh, making decisions to alter their physical appearance permanently. With surgery, tattoos, different, right? Piercings, different. You didn't do this, Brian Malosh told her in response. Be careful of anything you type on Messenger or text. The FBI is involved. They can access anything and everything. There he is. The child. The affair took center stage on Wednesday as questions were raised over Jennifer's claim on the day of the shooting that she and her husband couldn't have taken Ethan home because they were both working. However, Malosh testified that Crumley told him she could sneak off from work that morning to meet up with him. Ooh, so she's a liar. And a cheater. The thoughts won't stop. Help me. In that meeting, James and Jennifer were told to get their son counseling within 48 hours. Ethan sat with his head down with a gun in his backpack that was not searched. The two of them would secretly carry out their tryst on mornings of work days in parking lot across from her job. Unbelievable. As she returned to work following the alarming meeting, Smith testified that later that morning I saw Jennifer Crumley racing down the hall of the workplace, screaming over an active shooter report at her son's school. As she then left work, Crumley texted her boss that the gun is gone and so are the bullets in her home, which he had said he was surprised to be told by the mother. So all this is unfolding, and she is not a mother because she is uh, practicing infidelity. So there you go. Stop being a jerk and take care of your kids. YouTube, Discord, and Lord of the Rings led police to a teen accused of U.S. swatting spree. For nearly two years, police have been tracking down the culprit behind a wave of hoax threats. A digital trail took them to the door of a 17-year-old in California. The teenager, uh, prosecutor says responsible for hundreds of swatting attacks around the United States, was exposed after law enforcement pieced together a digital trail left on some of the Internet's largest platforms, according to court records released this week. Alan Winston Fillion, a 17-year-old from Lancaster, California, faces four felony charges in Florida's Seminole County related to swatting or fake threats called into the police to provoke a forceful response, according to Florida state prosecutors. His arrest marks the culmination of a multi-agency manhunt for the person police claim is responsible for swatting attacks in high schools, 
historical black colleges and universities, mosques, and federal agents. And for threats to bomb the Pentagon, members of the United States Senate, and the U.S. Supreme Court, ultimately a YouTube channel, Discord, chats, and usernames related to the Lord of the Rings, helped lead authorities to Fillion's doorsteps. So there you have it. There's always a trail, and if they want to find you, they can. Remember that. This is a child who's 17 years old. He's not a sophisticated criminal at all. And they just tracked him down after two years. So is that impressive? No. Why are we giving the FBI so much money if they can't find a 17-year-old uh, causing swatting? Like, why couldn't they find out that he called? Anyway, Biden Min released migrant crime wave sweeping sanctuary cities. What is a sanctuary city? Well, it's a city that says, if you want to come here and seek asylum, we will house you and uh, provide for you. And they're being overwhelmed because the border's wide open, 10,000 a day. It's said that 11 million are here uh, as a conservative estimate, more a liberal estimate, not political, but just mindset, uh, is 22 million. Okay? That's a lot. So here we go. Sanctuary cities in their suburbs are experiencing a crime wave from migrants who are released by the Biden administration after legally crossing the border between ports of entry. Police, particularly in the Chicago area and New York City, reported significant increases in crime related to migrants relocated to their city. They're coming up through El Paso, Texas. They're coming up, and uh, Governor Abbott is shipping them out of here. Um, I believe Florida also like maybe put them on a plane and sent them to um, Martha's Vineyard. That was an interesting thing done by Governor DeSantis. But anyway, Abbott's putting them on buses, sending them to New York. Even uh, Adams, Mayor Adams, I believe, was sending them up to Canada on a bus, you know? So uh, they don't know what to do. They're overwhelmed. These people are crossing the border, 10,000 people, just into these Texas cities. And they're saying, oh, man, Texas has to stop sending them to us. We're not prepared for this. We're not Texas. Well, get, like well, the sheer numbers are there. Like, you know, if you have 10,000 a day, that's 300,000 a month. That's a lot. That's a major city worth of people who have nothing but the clothes on their back and whatever aid they were given on the way up. Okay. So what are they doing? They're not families with kids, you know. They're military age male. So what's going on? This is truly an invasion. I believe that six felony arrests in one day illustrates that migrant criminal activity is a real problem. Can you imagine? Chief Strzok has said in a statement released by DuPage County, the amount of these types of arrests that we have had in the last couple of months is significant and would be taxing for any police department. We are well prepared to continue our enforcement efforts, and I can assure you that there are easier places to commit these crimes than Oak Brook or DuPage County. So he's basically saying, if you want to commit these crimes to the criminals, there's easier places to do it, and we're going to keep arresting you and putting you in jail, so give it up. The uh, organized migrant group brought magnetic devices to remove anti-theft devices from merchandising uh, before uh, loading it into suitcases, removing more than 10,000 worth of merchandise from a Macy's store. Prosecutors reported the second incident involved the alleged theft of nearly $1,000. So they're organizing. The internet is allowing these people to, to organize. And where's the FBI? Where is the CIA? How are they not able to uh, identify these people and track them and uh, get up all in their internet connections? They're able to find a 17-year-old. Why can't they uh, figure out what's going on here? And it's all in the eye of helping them? Well, listen, if someone shows up to your door, okay, just imagine... Like, forget the country and the border and people who need help and people who are leaving war-torn countries or places of poverty and whatever. Imagine someone shows up to your door. You got your little ring camera or whatever it's called. Ding-dong. You see them looking in it and, and you're like, okay, what's the deal here? Imagine two scenarios. One scenario, a mother with a child. The baby's potentially crying and she's emaciated. You're like, oh my God, like, this person needs help immediately. Like, come in, I will provide for you. I see you are, are in desperate need. Imagine another one, a guy in a polo shirt, flip-flops and jeans, okay? A neck tattoo, other tattoos, and he knocks on your door and he's standing there with his hands in his pockets. That's what's coming to the border, people. That guy, okay? He's in your country, and they're the ones online organizing on whatever app they got there and uh they're saying yeah let's let's hook up and start busting in all these stores and stealing well guess what britain's got plans to force 
protect nuclear sites with a RoboCop. Britain's nuclear sites could soon be protected by a RoboCop-style police force made up of AI-powered drones equipped with paint bombs and smoke guns. Nuclear Decommissioning Authority, the NDA, which runs high-security nuclear sites such as Sellafield and Dure, wants to build a robotic police force to cut costs and boost security across sites containing radioactive waste. It's offered 1.5 pound, 1.5 million pound to uh, security and defense companies for initial designs. So they're putting it out there, and what do they want? Boston Dynamics, check it out. This is a robot dog. They can mount uh, uh, little grippers to, to open doors. They can mount lasers on it. They can mount uh, machine guns, okay? Security is a key issue for the uh, NDA. Of course, they uh, don't want anyone to break in there and cause a, uh, a catastrophe. Well, perhaps they need these things roaming the streets. Like, is that where we're headed? Are we headed towards these robot dogs and robot drones flying around, identifying you? Uh, you know what I mean? Maybe this whole migrant thing is about bringing in the digital ID. You know, we can't keep track of all these people, so we need a surveillance system to find them all. Check it out. Maybe that's it. No one's talking about that. Maybe the tiger figured it out. Maybe it's all about surveillance. Because guess what? If there's like 22 million people who just entered the country and we don't know who they are, where they are, what they're doing. And just imagine 6 million of them are organizing and they're cri criminals. They're committing crimes. Well, guess what? We got to figure something out. We need everyone to have an ID. We need, we need cameras everywhere. Welcome to China. 14-year-old exposes overpaid corrupt superintendent and school board taxpayers are getting destroyed. So what's the problem here? Okay, well, everything's bloated. Spending is out of control. Okay, you look at the government. It's trillion dollars in interest. Interest. On the loan. The debt that they have to pay back. Okay? Well, Canada's just as bad. And so are these uh, organizations. Look at the school board. Superintendent makes 400000 per year. Every counselor on the board is making hundred k. Every principal, hundred k. Every media specialist, hundred k. Every director, hundred k. Every coordinator, hundred k. Every supervisor, hundred k. Is that too much? What are they doing? Like, what's happening? Everyone just gets hundred k base salary. Their own website. Every single teacher in the district is making well over hundred k per year. So, is every counselor, principal, media specialist, director, coordinator, and supervisor? It seems the only ones not making over hundred k are the lunch ladies. So that's where all your money's going. Proficiency scores are as low as 20% in the district. Why are you spending so much money on these people? You know, everything's bloated, okay? It needs to be reduced. So this whole liberal government of, like, you know, paying people. We covered the story. The, the Messenger yesterday, a newspaper. They had $50 million, and they blew through it in, like, nine months. Elon Musk shares video showing Tesla's Optimus robot performing detested task. The project has come a long way. So, uh, yeah, we covered this. Uh, some dude the other day was uh, uh, shit-talking Elon, saying someone had a remote control using this remote. And so Elon's like, whatever, check it out. Watch him fold this shirt. So it seems like he's connected here to something. Probably a battery source. Check out the dexterity. Absolutely great. Look at that. Definitely uh, better than some children, for sure. But not entirely impressive. Definitely wouldn't be hired to work at any uh, clothing store. So one day they'll be building things, they'll be cooking your food, they'll be taking your dog for a walk. They will be your dog, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Elon's telling everyone to give it up. This thing is unreal. It can do laundry. Alzheimer's may have been transmitted by a no longer used medical procedure. What? Well, uh, they were linking some of these brain diseases uh, to some gut microbiome and stuff. Well, what the heck is this? What could they be talking about? Uh, research reporting that medical procedure done decades ago on children with growth-related disorders may have transferred amyloid plaques. That's one thing they believe is causing Alzheimer's. People with Alzheimer's have this amyloid plaque there and they can't reduce it. So they're trying to develop medications that can reduce it. 
Maybe there's other reasons that cause this amyloid plaque or inflammation. But anyway, they believe that uh, injections of a pituitary-derived growth hormone contaminated with brain proteins associated with Alzheimer's disease. There it is. So if you've had uh, growth issues or your child has and you've given them some HGH to get them to uh, grow, then they could potentially be developing Alzheimer's. So go ahead and go see a doctor. Thank you for joining the Tiger on Friday, TGIF and TG. TB, thank God the Tiger's back, because they've been trying to ban me, and this episode might get me banned too. We'll see. See you on Monday, everybody.